Okay, um, just an update on the sled that I built for the Triton Work Center, the 2000. Um, a couple of guys have asked about the dimensions. Um, as I said on the previous video, the prior video, it's 9mm MDF here. Um, the measurement side to side, the width of this thing from here to here, really that's a personal preference. I guess it depends on how much overhang you want. You can see on mine it overhangs not too much. That width is 656 millimeters uh, of, the, of the width. Now the length is, is actually the, the more challenging idea. So what I mean length, I mean the, the length of the, the sled in this direction. You have to understand that the length that you choose for the sled and the rails that are underneath that slide in the captive slots here, um, there's an interplay between those dimensions. Um, so I'll just give you the dimensions so that you've got them. Um, the front to back, or what I'm calling the length, is 625 millimeters. That's this uh, piece of MDF that I started with. Um, the front fence is the same width, so, so 656 in my case. It could be anything you want. In fact, it doesn't even need to be the full width. It could be abbreviated only in the middle, or it could be reduced if you wanted to give it some shape. Um, I chose this just because I did. Um, it was arbitrary. The, um, the back fence, which is the more important fence in terms of alignment and so on, has a width of 735 millimeters from uh, edge to edge, now there, and that gives the overhang here. And as you might recall, um, when I slide this fence forward, there's an alignment between the scale, my measuring scale, um, on my fence, and then the scale on the mini sliding extension table. So in principle, if this is set up correctly, which it's not too bad, this scale here should align with this scale down here. Um, and should also align, if I pull this back, should also align with this scale on the, the standard Triton fence. I, I typically leave my fence on at the same time as the mini sliding extension table for most things because they're they're not wide enough to inter get any interference from these things. Um, that's just what I do. Um, th the real trick in all this is, of course, the the the, uh, the, the inserts here. Um, these are made from something. I don't even know. I don't even think it's a hardwood. Um, it's, they're problematic though. They, they're, and I'm not sure it's so much a, a matter of the material more as the, uh, the table uh, captive um, slots. They're not perfectly parallel. Uh, and that causes issues. You can see here, maybe, if I turn this and get some light on it, you might be able to see here those wear marks. Yeah, you can see those dark wear marks that are appearing there. Not so much in the middle, but then they appear at the back. Um, and those wear marks suggest, you can see it also on this side here, so the darker areas, that's where the, and you can maybe feel it as well, that's where the the, the metal material on the um, uh, on the table uh, top slots are rubbing, and eventually causing this thing to pivot slightly. Um, nonetheless, the measurements that I chose, the uh, these rails had to be, according to my thinking, 300 millimeters long, spaced. 124 millimeters from the back fence, from the important fence, so where the blade would end up. So hopefully you can see when I flip this back over again, this will be uh, facing the operator. This is the operator end of the sled. At the front, away from the operator, it's about 200 millimeters distance uh, from there. Um, the real challenge in designing this, uh, and I found it difficult to come up with 
what I would consider the the perfect dimensions, um, you can imagine if these were infinite, well, they can't be infinitely long because they would run out of space. If these were excessively long, then the amount of travel that you would get would be limited. So if you think about this, if I turn things around here, you can see that this length of 300 needs to be compared to the overall length here. And the difference between this length, so this might say 300 comes out to here, it basically means that the front of this, or the, actually this is the front one, the front of this one will start about 300 millimeters out, and then it will only be able to travel up to this point here. And then that becomes the limit of travel of the sled, all right? And thus, that limit of travel really effectively limits the length that the sled might as well be. Um, I, I think that there is not much advantage in making it much longer towards the front. So if I put this back in, you'll see what I mean with a bit of, a, with a bit of an act, action shot here. So the, if, so you can imagine now that the the, um, the rails are going to be limited at the back, so that locks that in there, and you can see here then that the sled will travel. So I'll I'll give a quick measurement. I didn't actually pre-measure this, but I'll give a quick measurement here. You can see here that the the sled is around 347 millimeters from the front of the, of the table. And when it travels forward then, it's going to travel forward until the, the, um, the, the rails underneath hit the front, in which case you can see that travel comes forward and then it has an overhang of perhaps, there's probably 150 millimeters of extension. Now, you could make the table longer if you wanted to in this direction here. Um, would that be of an advantage? It depends on what you're cutting. I think that the really critical dimension in all of this is the dimension starting back. And I might raise the table here just to show you. So if we raise the, the blade, sorry, not raise the table, raise the blade. So you can see here as I raise the blade, these dimensions are going to give, well it's raining here, you can hear it on my, on my shed roof. So we'll raise the blade to its maximum extent and you can see then that the limit of the piece, that I, the work piece that I can work on is limited by that dimension there. And that measures out to be... Um, I would call that, uh, with safety, you might get something that's 400 millimeters in that gap. So that's not too bad for the table saw sled. I've never cut anything bigger in that. Um, I don't think that it would be necessary for anything that I work on. Um, so. I guess for me then, the way I thought about these dimensions, that's sort of what drove my decision making. Um, if you're working on, on different items, um, longer items, if you wanted to work on longer items, you could probably push this back fence back, make the table longer. But the problem is, and this is another design consideration, now that the blade has been fully extended upward, you need to make sure that the maximum height of the blade meets and just goes into the 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 the, um, the the back fence. That'll mean that you've cut through the piece to the entire height of the blade. All right, and I've left perhaps that's that's the maximum point there. If you really wanted to optimize this, that's about maximum there. Um, I've got another centimeter 
of travel just to make sure I get a clean cut. Now, you may not need a full centimeter. That means you could probably move the rails underneath slightly uh, in one direction to, to give you less forward motion. Um, but again, it, it, um, it's really a, a matter of trade-offs. So again, I think you can see the idea here how that works. Um, in terms of the length of this, the, uh, the rails underneath, I'm not really, um, I haven't optimized that. The 300 millimeters that I chose gave reasonable um, stability. And what I mean by stability is that there's, there's not much rotational. You can just see here, um, you can see the motion. This, this is not good. See how it moves. You can maybe see it there as well. Yeah, it's hard to see on the cam on camera. You can see it moving there, um, and it tends to it it tends the entire thing tends to rotate in this in this direction. I'm not sure what the center of rotation is. Um, I I reckon because the slides are under here and here that the rotation is centered on their midpoint somehow. Um, and the reason why that rotation, or the, why this rotation of the table is there, is because of the poor alignment of these rails. All right. Uh, not only are the rails not parallel to one another, but I think they also have a slight deviation in them. It's it's only slight. It's it's um could be fractions of a millimeter, but adding up that gives you enough play. Um, and the the way to resolve to resolve that issue is that the the the, um, uh, the runners that go in there have to be a little bit narrower than the slot, um, and then that in turn means that there's some slop there and and some play, some movement. So that's that's the a little bit more detail on this on this sled. Um, one of the concepts that I'm sort of toying with in my mind is to get rid of the top entirely. Um, and if one could get rid of the top and install some other better material that had better mechanical properties and was more reliable, you might be able to uh, run slides on the outside here, sort of captive slides, on both sides of the saw, here and here. Now, mine won't do that on this. I'd have to remake this. If I put captive slides on to grab the side of the table, I have tried that with this table in the past, but the challenge there is that the table, because it's pressed metal, tends to flare out in the corners, which means that the width corner, side to side at the corners, is different than the width side to side in the middle. And that difference, again, was enough to cause play, rotational play, or binding um, in, in, the, um, in the sled. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't lubricated this up with wax. I probably should do that. I haven't, still haven't done that. I don't think that lubricating uh, the, the, um, the, the, uh, the slides would do much because of, there's a, it's not too rough in there. It's pretty smooth. I don't know that it would make much difference, and it might just cause it to get gummed up, and that's not something I really wanted to bother with. Anyway, that's the update. Um, if you've got any questions or need more detail, just let me know.